Discord. Welcome, everybody. Um, a little bit of a segue here before I begin. Uh, yeah, I'm not well. I originally had planned to write a nine book series about this whole thing, and I, with what limited time I have left, there's no time. In the time, I also had planned to approach video game companies about doing a trilogy surrounding these concepts, which would be three stories within each game. Again, no time. I don't have time. Uh, my time is limited on this world, and the easiest way for me to do this and let make sure people know about my children is to do a series like this. And I, I was convinced to do so, and I'm kind of happy I was because it kind of makes sense at this point. So the whole concept is called Aspects of Morn, and it was going to be nine books each with its own set of characters, and today I'm going to go over one of those books, the book being called Freya Kane. This would have been the launch title. Uh, Freya Kane, I'm going to go over, it's basically, this is all going to give away the plots and everything in the book, and again, I don't have time. Somebody down the road after the in inevitable happens, um, I know the caretakers that I'm going to entrust to all of this. They want to do something that's great. Uh, in this opening video, I just want to make sure that people understand I don't believe in less armor is more for character designs. That's a no-no. I don't. I never read any Witchblade, Lady Death, or Vampirilla. None of my characters have that type of look. No cleavage showing, no nothing like that. I'm sorry. For me, it's not about feminism or anything like that. It's just I think superheroes should look like they're going to mean business and my heroes mean business all the time the closest i come to characters showing skin is either their head or cut off sleeves in one instance there's an underwater character who has wearing literally kind of a scuba type outfit but a scuba gear type outfit but that's about it i don't really like some of the stuff i've seen in past comic books i grew up with a crush on batgirl and the only part of batgirl you see Skin-wise is her face, at least in most interpretations of her. So that being said, uh, those are my caveats for the caretakers of this when I'm no longer here. But getting into this, I want to talk about this concept, Freya Kane. Freya Kane is my answer to a Dragoon, my answer to... Uh, because I have a phrase called Dragoon for Life. I love Dragoons out of Final Fantasy, and I wanted to do something unique and one of the unique things is most of the heroes in my universe a are female and b aren't human so the star of this book is freya kane and she's what's known as a void crew no not the grew from zork this is my own race of grew <laughs> they have nothing to do with that concept uh no <laughs> The Gru are actually kind of, they are reclusive, and that's about as close as they get to living in the darkness. She's a void Gru because where the Gru live is a world that swirls around a black hole and doesn't go in, and that's because of their own ingenuity that it does that. So there's two types of Gru. There's the void Gru and the pale Gru. Uh and it, yes, it's a skin tone thing, but at the same time, mm, I don't like focusing on that. It's just something I play Dungeons and Dragons for years, and it's more like the environment. One side lives closer to the black hole, the other side of the planet doesn't. And that's the only, and no, there's no going at each other because of their skin color. No, both pale and void grew long ago came together as one race so they are there's no segre in my world there is no segregation like that nothing everybody gets along there's no true racial tensions although there are some races that act like they shouldn't but the other races and heroes are trying to make bring them to heal and say hey you can't act like that you need to act like this there's no reason to be like that. And you'll get into it. Those are races like the Red Caps and, <coughs> and my rat folk who, who are, uh, and the Tarask, as you'll find out. Um, but the Gru, they're pretty cool. It's just, 
demeanor. That's it. That's the only difference between the Void and the Pale Guru is uh, just where they're located on their planet. That's it. That's how it determines their skin tone as they're growing up. Some are having light completely devoid of where they live. And yes, I know that means they should be pale. But no, the singularity, because of the magic and technology that they use, <coughs> actually causes a different pigmentation to happen on their skin. And that's one of the cool aspects also grew don't have ears they have horns growing up out of the growing out spiraling out of the sides of their heads where the horns where the ears would have been it kind of looks kind of cool they're not small horns they're actually pretty lengthy uh and that's what they use to hear there's actually little sound holes throughout those horns that actually they do a really good job with echolocation and you don't want to try and sneak up on one of them because odds are you're not going to. Uh, and that being said, Freya is a burster. Now that may she doesn't jump up in the air. She's all about forward momentum. She's mastered a technique of rushing forward with uh, what she calls calls her fuse, which is a lance, uh, a half. It's it's a wider lance, but in a little bit stockier, but shorter. It's shorter. Um, and she rushes forward with it either when she's got two feet firmly planted on the ground or on her motorcycle that she calls my calls nightmare, which is kind of very cool looking motorcycle, at least in my head. Oh, uh, I'm just going to go over her description here, right here. Freya wears a suit of night blue armor that is a mix of leather and plate. Her helmet is a semblance of a dragon. She has dark gray skin and horns that spiral from the side of their head instead of ears, just like I said. Uh, and all grew her like that. Um, Freya spent time studying both gunslingers and jumpers, which are two uh, heroic factions on my world. Uh, gunslingers use as not necessarily guns, because the one that you're going to meet further down the road, she does not use guns she uses something else and i think it's kind of cool jumpers <clears throat> uh are my literal uh answer to dragoons they jump up in the air and they use what's called wind magic and fall back down on their prey uh the best example i have a jumper in here you'll find it's in my team centric book her name's hazel and she's also a bipedal rabbit called <laughs> a bipedal rabbit called a hare they're actually kind of cool uh, after much trial and error, she developed a new weapon and skill set, creating the Bursters. They wield a short lance that has the ability to project both defensive and offensive bursts of energy. <sighs> Her usual allies, who are in this book, would have been in this book, are Bubblegum McCroyer and Doomscythe. And my favorite quote that I have from her is, Friends are the best form of backup, and she learns that throughout the entire novel. And you'll find out why. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, uh, turn that off. There we go. Okay, let's get into uh, her bat er, get her into Freya Kane a little bit more. And forgive me, this is all off the cuff, and I'm not re-recording anything. Uh, the original premise behind Freya's series was to showcase someone who was set on doing things one way, but having to adapt to another. At the onset of the book, she is informed that the trio she had hoped to work within cannot come together. Through quick happenstance, she meets two heroes new to her world, Bubble Grandma Cryer, and Doomscythe. As the events unfold, it soon becomes apparent that the three heroes are each entrenched in personal issues that merge together. Freya's main arc centers on getting through the trials with her new allies so she can find replacements for her personal trio. Halfway through the book, the group breaks apart because the others feel Freya's heart is elsewhere. Feeling guilt at her actions, Freya throws herself into finding clues for both Scythe and Bubblegum. She easily tracks down Bubblegum, who had really only left to make Freya feel bad. Together, they both find Scythe and give her an answer that is amazing and horrid at the same time. And we'll get into that as we go. So that's Freya Kane in a nutshell. <clears throat> and we get now we're going to take a look at her co-stars. The first is Bubblegum Acryer. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Micronauts, but <clears throat> I didn't want to traipse on any copyrights or anything, so Bubblegum Acryer here. It's a spelled differently, and I took a more uh, Roman-esque meaning to the name 
Acroyers or these guys that were standing, uh, well, would have been standing on the beach with uh, the people in 300, but they decided not to. Um, but that's what an Acroyer is. It's a kind of a Roman soldier. Um, I went for it. Oh, I thought I got rid of these nets. Sorry, I've been dealing with that issue constantly. Um, Bubblegum Acroyer is uh, an Octaverix. Uh, I will get into her race in a minute. Her real name is Ventara. Uh, she, she literally calls herself a tank. Uh, she wears a suit of containment armor and wields what she calls a phasic blade called Beauty. It's basically a, a really big blade akin to kind of like clouds, but looks vastly different. Um, her description is as follows. Bubblegum wears a suit of containment armor that covers most of her body. It is all pink and purple. A visor covers the face most of the time, but does not hide that underneath it all is a being of mostly pure energy. Her body is pink and sparks regularly. Uh, her background is Bubblegum came to Morn looking for a race of creatures known as the Tarasque. They seem to have destroyed the nebula where she was born. The remainder of her race traverses space in the hopes that one of them might find those who had ruined their home. Usual allies are Freya Kane and Doomscythe. <laughs> I love her quote. Caffeine is the best source of energy I've ever encountered. Uh, Quirk Bubblegum seems to be hyper and happy all the time. She has admitted this is used to hide a pain of a great loss. Get that out of here. Okay, cool. Huh. Bubblegum was set to appear in Freya Kane's novel. She is an homage to Pinkie Pie from My Little Pony, and I envisioned Andrea Lidman, I misspelled that, voicing her, but with a more mature version of Pinkie's voice. Uh, she is found waiting to meet Freya in the God of Raven's mansions to enlist the Burster's help in finding any hints of the race that brutally destroyed the nebula her people called home. Freya does not know what to think of her at first, but is constantly trying to get the hero to calm down. About halfway through the novel, Freya uncovers that both the Tarasque and Psy's story are tangled together as a bigger threat emerges. Freya's reunion with Bubblegum is quite revealing. Instead of refusing anything from Freya after being spurned, the young hero bursts into tears and explains that she hides behind her cheers. Uh, together they seek out Scythe with great urgency as the paladin is the very key their foes need to elevate their plans to completion. Yep. All right. Let's get into the last character, that being Doom Scythe. <sighs> Real name, Mia Suv. She's half Phoenix, half Wendigo. She doesn't know that going in. She has no clue. Or does she? Let's take a look at her. She's a paladin. She wields what she calls a luminant long blade and a luminant shield. They look techish, but they're actually magical in nature. Uh, she can heal herself and others. She has an aura of light that blinds being of evil and darkness. She has pale white skin with black feathers as hair on top of her head and covering the backsides of her wrists, her elbows, and her shoulders. She wears white plate armor that glows at the seams. Um... Her background side, it, the onset of the novel, has no clue who her parents were. She was raised by a kind-hearted pilot and decided to take the same path as her own as she sought answers about who and what she is. Again, she has no clue. Or does she? Uh, her usual allies, of course, are Bubblegum and Freya. Uh, her quote is, Darkness and evil have no place save at the mercy of justice. That's pretty... I, I love that quote because it, I wanted something that sounded like a paladin and that one I hemmed and hawed. You know, she was kind of hard to, even though I am kind of paladin-esque in nature, it was very hard for me to flesh out her character. It was until I just hit it a stride and just went with it. Scythe is serious and headstrong. She has the might to back up her actions, but rarely takes numbers or tactics to heart. Yep. And lastly, her little biography here. Maya is the last of the trio that was set to appear in Freya Kane. She is the embodiment of a paladin. In the opening chapters, Freya finds her outside confronting a trio of thieves known as the Harlequins. They are attempting to steal a sword from a wiry figure that turns out to be an ancient foe of the Pantheon, or the gods of this world, um, Elric Karza. 
during the fight, Bubblegum shows up and surprises both in her ability to be all business when it comes to heroics. Sai's main story centers on finding her parents and the answer as to why they abandoned their daughter. When it becomes apparent that the three are getting nowhere together, she breaks off and decides to go about things alone once more. Frey and Bubblegum uncover the truth of Scythe's parents and rush to find their friend before it's too late. The final battle centers on Scythe, revealing she knew the truth and originally wanted to put her parents down in vengeance, but her friends managed to open her heart. Yeah. So the story literally revolves around the Tarrasque and um, Scythe's parents, setting into motion something where they're trying to kidnap... um, the hearts of all these uh, gods that are were created by the Pantheon, who are basically the older gods that have survived, like Odin and Thor and all of them. They created what you would call demigods, and one of and those demigods are literary figures that have been given god godhood, like Edgar Allan Poe, Shakespeare, and um, H.P. Uh, Lovecraft, and they. Um, Scythe's parents and the Tarrasque have been looking for the hearts of these gods because they intentionally hid them so they couldn't be captured because it became apparent early on to some ne'er-do-wells that the hearts of these literary gods could be used to create other things. And some of those things... mm, Let's just say one of those literary gods on the core aspect where all nine of these novels was set to take place one of those literary gods is really well protected (laughs) really well protected and you'll see how and why as i get into the other characters but for now that's this and yeah Sai knew that her parents were no good she found out what she was all along she just plays the part and so she could get some assistance getting some headway as to where she was going and Really didn't want assistance from the beginning, but she takes it unwillingly, and when she's given a chance, she just ta- she just takes Freya's kindness and flushes it down the toilet and moves on so she can go about what she wanted to do, something very grim and dark. But she soon realized that she couldn't do it, even during the fight. She was like, no, I'm not here to do that anymore. I'm just here to arrest them and put them on a prison planet like the where villains belong i was like on and i deeply wanted to get this story out and i'm unable to because of my health because of the time frame i have and this is the only way to do this so i hope you guys have enjoyed this first look at aspects of morn this was set to be the first novel uh i hope you continue to watch this series and i will see you guys in the near future and thank you